I wanted to do something completely different. I wanted to do something that would let some of the children see that everything they're learning is linked. Eleanor Wilkinson is a maths teacher from Sussex with big plans for a cross-curricular space and rocket week. It hadn't been done before, but it seemed like a sensible thing to have a go at. And if we don't try these cross-curricular activities, how do we know if they're going to work? But can she convince her colleagues? When I knew that Space and Rocket Week was on, I thought, oh, crikey, how can I do Space and Rocket Week? And inspire students to see links between subjects. At St Paul's Catholic College in Burgess Hill, they're launching an experiment in cross-curricular learning. We've tried some cross-curricular projects through things like our sports specialism. We're a specialist sports college and that's been quite effective between PE and science as an example. But we thought this was a unique opportunity to actually push that further and to develop that across all subject areas. For four days, Year 8s will be learning about space and rockets in subjects as diverse as art and maths. With an emphasis on teamwork and independent learning, how will the experiment go down with pupils and staff? I should just leave them to it. So it's all about them on a voyage of discovery. Space and Rocket Week blasts off with the first lesson, maths. Your mission is to design and build and launch a rocket. And apart from that, I'm not going to tell you anything the whole of Year 8 has been divided into groups and have been given inspirational team names like Motivation or Integrity. And in Debbie's classroom, Team Endurance. They're given detailed instructions telling them the bottles will fly by being partly filled with water and pumped full of air. The main task, as far as the maths is concerned, is to manage their million pound budget. You are buying a rocket for £2,000 and you've signed it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. There you go. They had to um, buy the equipment that they needed in order to make a rocket that could be launched. So they had to buy a pop bottle and any card, any um, decoration, tape, glue, scissors, any equipment they needed to manufacture this rocket and they had to um, produce a budget and stick to it. Mimi. Ask, the, ask Mess, like a NASA consultation, what um, the essentials are on the list, because that would be easier than figuring it out ourselves. Yeah, what we're going to ask them? Yeah, only three thousand pounds. We're planning on wasting money on colours. Oh, and now you're planning on wasting money on questions. That's not wasting money, though. They can ask me questions, but if they do, they have to pay three thousand pounds for a consultation fee. Which is quite difficult, actually, because I'm so used to always answering questions. OK. What would you like to ask? What the well, essentials. The essentials, what are the essentials? Essentials, right. To give you... That's a sort of big question. It's still okay. one question, though. It is one question, but it requires lots of answers. So I would say I will give you a semi-answer and then you can think about whether you want to extend your questioning, OK? So I would suggest that you might need cardboard to make some sort of fins from. Um, you will also definitely need some rocket fuel, which is water. Apart from that, I will speculate a bit more, but that would be another £3,000. So that is what I would say your basics One would point. be. <laughs> that is what you're Who works harder in the classroom? Is it the teacher or is it the learner? And for many years, in many successful schools, it's the teacher who's been working the hardest. And in fact, it changes our role and it enables the learners to take the lead there and for them to be committed to their own learning rather than us driving them through it the whole time. We can't have it being straight away, otherwise it just wastes money. It's not all about the essentials as well. Yes, it is all about the essentials. <laughs> as soon as some of them see the group lists, they want to be opting out, they want to not be with that group, can, can I change? And it's very hard to impress on them, you cannot change your group, you've got to stick with the one that you've got. And we do have a policy here that you work with everybody and you respect everybody. We have six, uh, the large cardboard, please. Is, yep. is there pink? They're sort of peachy colours. 
brownie colours and blue and yellow. So, which one would you like, Mimi? Sounds great. Unfortunately, no pink, so... This is slightly better quality cardboard than the rest. So oh, we'll have, we'll have that one, then. Uh, miss, no, we'll get blue! That's quite good quality. Well, good quality, good quality. quality. OK, let me see your check, Aaron. Cardboard, 65,000. OK, there you go. Thank you. That's disgusting. The team don't really get going until the end of the first lesson, when one of the team members draws their attention to the details in the instructions. Because it's such a big notepad, we thought it was just filled with checks and stuff, so we didn't really bother reading it all, but then when John looked through it, there was, like, really important stuff, so we kind of had to read it all. On rocket checklist, fill names and see complete budget protection sheet. I think they found it very difficult to start with because they didn't quite know what to do or what they were supposed to be doing. But once they got the hang of what they were aiming for, um, they got on quite quickly. Oh, little, uh, little Aaron, all we've done is bought things, that's it. We've got to do it. We know what we're doing now. We just need to actually do it. Eleanor had a very special reason for choosing a space theme for the cross-curricular week. Last year, I was one of nine teachers selected from the UK to go to the Teacher's Space Camp, which is an educator space camp. What we had to do was we had to do some pretend missions and some people were in the space station doing experiments. The picture there, I'm being Capcom, which is the person who has the joy of saying, welcome home, Discovery. That's the zero gravity chair. They spin you around in that for 45 seconds. The trouble is, being a maths teacher, I counted to 45 and I was in there a lot more than 45 seconds. I don't think I'd make a very good astronaut. Having been in Alabama for two weeks, I felt I ought to pay back, really. I went on the trip in June. I spent some time sort of sorting the resources into curriculum areas and realised that almost every curriculum area was covered. Staff mostly by October, November, were saying, yeah, go for it. With the new national curriculum, creativity, diversity, cross-curricular, enterprise, group work, all these things are the key words of what we've got to include. So it seemed like a perfect opportunity to see if it would work. Okay, so that's £200,000 for one bottle. There you go. Competing against Team Endurance are Ashley, Mina, Elise and their team. Discovery. They're working down the corridor with maths teacher Jason Newland. I should just leave them to it. So it's all about them on a voyage of discovery. So they're trying to work it out for themselves rather than me telling them. Are we going to use masking tape or sellotape? Which one should you keep? Masking tape. They're the same. Masking tape. Use masking tape. It smells well. Sometimes some of us aren't listening to others as much as we could do. What are we using? What are we using? Uh, we're going to put the mission patch in the middle, like that, and then we're going to put the two wings at the side. Yeah. Because we were thinking... Yeah. A change to mask is usually boring, quite serious, so we're just kind of trying to have fun. I think partly because Eleanor, being a maths teacher, was involved in the organisational bit, we were quite insistent that we didn't just want to do the adding up bits, we wanted to do the fun bits because there are lots of fun things in maths to do. We, we feel that students definitely lose some of the skills they have in independent learning and making links between subject areas that they have at primary school. With the new curriculum, we've got an opportunity really to push that and develop it and to, to avoid students compartmentalising their learning. Um, making clear links across the curriculum. We're right in the middle of a textures project uh, and trying to pack something else into an already busy syllabus is, is tough. But uh, just with a bit of lateral thinking, I knew we could make a texture, so texture of the moon. Because I don't think rockets are very textured, so the moon was better. <laughs> it looks rather delicious and, and a little bit like porridge. This will be the texture and the colour for our moon. This is really horrible but very effective. Getting a lump of loo roll, mixing up our porridge. When we actually glue that down, we're starting to get something like a moon surface. The kids have done something which we can carry on building with. I can do something, something else with that. So using sand and string and glue to that large extent is not what I perhaps would have done in my initial planning. 
Who did you join up with? Well, that's quite a good top one there. Oh, up there. I think for me it was fun because um, I felt like I'd just got a little moment to go a bit crazy. It's the end of the day, and Eleanor and her colleagues in the maths department have grabbed a few minutes to discuss how the rocket building is going. And the other thing that we, I was thinking was about the questioning, because it was really interesting, because they, had to, because they had to pay money to ask a question, it stopped them doing all of their... What do I write in this? How do I do... You know, all the stupid questions, which they ask all the time, which was brilliant. Yeah. But it also, I think, stopped them asking questions that they should have asked. I mean, might maybe have, I don't know, four compulsory questions that they have to pay for, and they have to think about what's... You know, you have to pay this money, so what's it, what is it worth using your question on? Because you wouldn't normally go away and build a rocket without asking NASA about it, would you? I mean, you know... <laughs> and, so, and they sort of tried to do that. Who said this? One small step for man, one oh. giant leap for mankind. Bessie! Oh. Neil Armstrong, nice one. Who's Neil Armstrong? Astronaut who was first on the moon. Fantastic. OK, so... It's Tuesday, um, and Space and Rocket Week has gone back in time. Here's our first picture. Just have a look at what there is. Think about the atmosphere within space. In our class, we looked at whether the moon landings were a hoax. Um, whether, whether Apollo 11 actually landed on the moon or whether the US government actually made it up. Um, I don't know what it is or what it could prove, but there's something in the background yeah. to the left of him, like sort of shadow. Oh, this yeah. thing? Yeah. The Space and Rockies Week kind of brought it all to life because they knew about the moon, they knew about how the gravity and the water on the moon were pretty much non-existent. And without that, it would have been, uh, it would have been pretty difficult to judge the reliability of these, these documents. Um, you know, the behind, it's really dark. Yeah. And apparently the dark side of the moon is like, it's minus something or other. Surely they would have come further away from the dark side of the moon. There's like no cord from the person, Neil Armstrong, to the spaceship. Yeah. Like, keep him on. And how'd the <laughs> rocket stay on there? Excellent. That is a fantastic question, which hopefully... To actually have a week where you're not assessing them, it's not working towards a final grade, it's just doing it for the pure love of the subject has uh, been brilliant. Story that's been... Just touch on it, yeah? I think you're right, a very good year group to do it with because you can give them those skills which will really be useful for them and powerful for them as they go up through the school. Whereabouts this moon was in relation... They're not working for exams, they're not new into the school and we're always trying to look for things that encourage the year eights to work harder and aim for something. The more we can look at cross-curricular learning lower down in the school, the better. For Space and Rocket Week, the Design and Technology Department have asked the teams to design and build a Mars lander. One plastic cup, your egg, of course. They're working on structures which will land an egg safely when it's dropped off the school roof. Just do it like that, and then, that, and then elastic, band. elastic band around that. Yeah. Look good as well. Yeah, that looks all right. How are we going to put the balloon on? We're going to blow it up and tape it down. <laughs> there are three parachutes. There's the balloon, the tissue paper, and the piece of paper. And then we have lots of cups and eggs and stuff in there to make a padded and marshmallows. But make eight her one. <laughs> the slower it descends, the more points you're going to get. If we can get the egg out at the end and it's intact nice and easily, three points. When you're ready. I think if you're going to achieve something that's significant, you, you do take a calculated risk and you reflect on what's going to push your school to develop further. I would suggest that by learning in this way, it will enable students to achieve more highly at, in their exams, as well as having um, good personal learning and thinking skills. So, it's a really easy exercise, OK? You're going to be working in pairs. You get your apple, and you're going to cut it in half, and you're going to cut it into quarters, so you end up with a nice, sharp wedge like that. So I want you just to peel your apple, mind your little fingers, two teaspoons of sugar, move the apple around with your hands, lay them out on your baking sheet, <coughs> put them in the oven for five minutes, then we'll have a little taste comparison. Right, okay, so you can start slicing them up. They've done a lot of working in teams in Space Week, and so they're working very well as teams, lots of consultation and, well, you know, 
discussing matters. So that was really good. What are they like? Oh, nice. nice. wow, delicious. Lee, how do they taste? Um, they're really nice, but I don't think soft apple is really a good combination. <laughs> you don't think cinnamon apple is a good combination? Quite sweet and smooth. Sweet and smooth. OK. Now, everybody come and get some astronaut cinnamon wedges. Feel them, look at them, smell them, taste them. The ones that were, we just tasted were hard and dry. Uh, they just tasted completely just like rubber to me. It's been really fun. And, um, um, well, we've done like really different things. <laughs> We do really different things compared to like we do normally. And it's just a lot more fun than normal weeks. Kids love it, and we've got nearly 100% attendance, which is really good. There's, there was one child off sick yesterday, and I think there's one off sick today, and that's it. It's been complicated, but I think mostly the videos have been got that we need to get, the pictures have been got that we need to get, and the children are basically doing space and rockets across the curriculum, which is what we aimed for. It's maths, and Team Endurance have only the next 40 minutes to complete their project. Well, I'm Ryan down the checks, as you can see. That's all mine. Um, Mimi's kind of coordinating it a little bit. Millie's drawing stuff, and uh, Joe's giving out ideas. Yeah. I'm like... Oh, helping put the thing together. I think we presume as teachers that you say get into a team and everyone does it automatically. Whereas it's really important for the students to be able to identify the roles that they play in the team and what makes an effective team. Challenging them to reflect on that will be a really powerful tool for them. What else do we need to do? I would need to do other stuff. Let's just do this first, eh? Yeah. Where's the next bit? Do we have any masking tape? Do we really need masking tape? What do we have masking tape? We'll just use it like little bits. Nearly. What's this for? Is it for masking tape? Yes. I'm the author. Okay, okay, I don't care. Okay, just sign it. Oh, is that your signature? Fine. Yeah. Have you written me a check? Are you keeping a good record of your expenses? Yes. 60,000, 70,000, um, 73,000. Can I remind everyone that I... Oh, no, we're not going to stick them on yet, because we've got measurements, don't we? Look, 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 look. it doesn't matter about one. John, can you measure that? I heard some of them talking about circumferences and things in order to work out cones, but, of course, very quickly they realised that, although they might need to work out a circumference or a diameter of, a, of their bottle. They can also just get a bit of card and put the card round it and, and work it out just by trial and error. And we can't go completely, let's do teamwork all the time because it doesn't get the high enough level maths in. The problems aren't challenging enough sometimes. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough time to argue, so let's just get paid. Anyways, Aram, we need more masking tape. Why? I thought you wanted glue a second ago. More tape. More tape. Glue. Glue or tape? Oh, glue it down and everything. How much does glue cost? 50,000. 50,000. The pink rocket. It's a rocket that's pink, basically, because the girls wanted it to be pink. I'm going to take a cap off and it's going to fly off. That's actually really good on your head. <laughs> is it straight? Yeah. So is it going to work, do you think? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> I think we've got some rockets that might fly, so... <laughs> Although some of them don't look like it at the moment. OK. In Debbie's classroom, the teams have managed to stay on task. Down the corridor, fellow maths teacher Jason is facing some of the challenges of allowing students to work independently. Who's got the original design drawn out? We don't have it. We don't have a design. We're going we in by thought. Who is in charge of design then? Frankie. Huh? He didn't, didn't choose anyone in charge of design. Yeah, he done the it and then. Jason planned to let them work independently, but can't help getting involved. So how can you budget for the materials if you haven't designed it? Um, I don't know. We can't blame Frankie. What? Blame me? Yes, yeah, blame Frankie. They just seem to be making up as they go along. So if that was real business, they'd quickly run out of money um, and probably end up with a design that doesn't fly. 
The teams have been given clay to help balance their rockets, but they've got other ideas. The freedom to work independently can be an excuse to do nothing, as Jason's finding out. They haven't tested the weight and the balance, which is all in the instructions, and it's not going to fly very far at all. I, most of us know what we're doing, like with a rocket, but I don't think all of us know what we're doing. But it's, it's quite nice to see them being independent. What was frustrating was that we were allowing the ones that were doing nothing to do nothing. So we let them sit there and perhaps from an outsider's point of view, they were wasting two or three lessons. Um, but hopefully in reality, what they were doing was realising well, actually that they've wasted their time um, and no one else's. It's probably easier if we get someone to tell us, but if it's like... If we do ourselves, then we might think of a better idea than just the teachers telling us, and also it makes us like think more, so it's more fun. When we look at our students at A-level, they're still very dependent, and they wanted to be um, drip-fed every bit of information as they're learning at A-level, and that's not a realistic model for um, higher education at university or for the workplace. If we don't teach them how to think and how to learn, then there's something missing, and so that's what we're committed to making sure happens. I would make it more structured, um, but then I don't want to give too much structure because it's all about them finding out for themselves, but you know, a bit more structure, perhaps a few more uh, deadlines built in within the three lessons rather than just saying, here's three lessons, go and do it. Some of them look like they've actually made a rocket that flies, which is quite encouraging. So on Thursday we'll get to see who wins, how far they go, um, and then we'll know. It's the final day of the cross-curricular project at St Paul's Catholic College. And for the two teams and their classmates, it's the moment they've all been waiting for. Time to launch their bottle rockets and see whose goes highest. Five minutes to sort out your rockets and fix them. The rocket launches involve the whole of Year 8 assisted by Year 10s who are distributing fuel and measuring how high they fly with a clinometer, and sixth formers pumping the bottles with air. We want to beat everybody. We're going to smash them. And we'll put water in it, like they're doing. Yeah, and then it goes, <laughs> yeah we're going to win. Yeah. Ours is just too cool. Endurance are watching the launches carefully, hoping to pick up some tips and blast their rockets as high as possible. We're tipping the water out because that one had hardly any water in and it went really high, so we're tipping water out. I'll give that one the best one so far. With endurance in the lead, can Discovery's rocket blast them into the running? <laughs> Maths isn't just about turning on a calculator and putting a few numbers in there. It's about how high did that go, how fast did that fly, how big could that be, why would that work, why would this not work, and it's about investigating and experimenting as well. <laughs> With rockets successfully launched, Eleanor and her colleagues have asked the students to reflect on their experience of the week and fill out feedback forms. They need to have an ownership of their learning and, and the way we teach them. And also that kind of feeds into our commitment to developing student voice and to, for them to be able to give feedback to us about what the most meaningful learning experience is for them. <laughs> Could have included more people, but I think everyone did do something. It wasn't, we didn't leave them out for the whole thing? Uh, I was a bit of a leader, I suppose. Well, if I was working in a team again, I think give people specific jobs because I think that would be easier and we'd um, get it done quicker. I didn't really understand it, so I just talked. But when Mina said, look, Elise, you've got to start working, then I felt that I wasn't doing that much and I had to do it. You just try and, like, 
just drag them in and try and tell them that everyone else is working, why are you just not working? Working together and learning stuff about new people because I didn't really know um, Mina or Kim, who I was working with, so... I'd be disappointed if they didn't notice any difference in the way that they were learning and being taught. Before you, like, asked the teacher anything, you had to really think whether or not you needed to ask it. It was quite good because it made you think more, but then in some ways it was a bit hard because then you, like, weren't sure about different things, but it made you think more. I didn't do any textbook work for the whole week. That's fantastic. Right. You guys have worked really hard this week and I hope you've enjoyed yourself, but we do have a few prizes because with everything there's always a winner. Space and Rocket Week for us was a taste of how we could do things day to day rather than it just being a one-off. We feel that making sense of learning is what's the mo what is most important for students to grasp and to understand. And so if we can think of ways of doing that day to day to, so that they don't learn the same information in two or three subject areas and make no links between them at all, then that will be quite a powerful thing. Discovery was in third place and Discovery's rocket went eight metres in the air. So I think that deserves a round of applause. Discovery and Endurance didn't come away with any prizes, but perhaps they gained something more valuable. I think they also began to see what, if you picked a subject like Space and Rockets, you could see it in maths, you could see it in science, you could see it in history, and maybe they began to make some links, and I think some of them really did make some links. In second place, who knows why, Endeavour. The overall winners for height goes for 10.9 metres in the air was Integrity.